Well, if you really wanted to impact staff morale, you would look at the world of one of your staff members and you compare it to the world of an elite level athlete over a one year, two year period. The elite level athlete has complete clarity about what they're moving towards. They want to win an Olympic medal. They want to be in the final or something. They want to set a world record. Absolute clarity. Then they also have clarity of why. It's been my dream ever since I was a kid. When I'm doing this sport, I feel like more alive than I ever have at any other time in my life. I'm born to do this. Now you go to the organization. So to staff member, what is the clarity of what you're moving towards? And they say, oh, well, the company wants three offices are overseas next year, or we want to turn over $200 million a year. Why? Oh, well, you know, they're the target's been given, we're growing, or that's just what we do. Mm, you've missed the boat there straight away. Where's morale? So this person can have morale because the morale comes from, am I getting closer to my goal? Is the morale for the level athlete always good? No. Anytime they're making progress towards the goal, morale is excellent. Anytime they're not, morale is down. So now, if the staff member at work does not have clarity about what they're moving towards and why, morale is impossible. Now, you might say, oh, it's just not possible in an organization, but it is. Look at the Disney organization. Walt Disney set up that organization with a core purpose, make people happy. If that's not a match for you, then this is not a place for you. But every target we set is going to be relevant to that. Like, look at our organization. We develop elite talent. If that's your passion, then you belong here. Everything we decide and every action we take is relevant to that. So that's our primary. So if someone's got another agenda, say environmental issues or social welfare or cutting budgets or making sure that the kitchen area is clean or making sure that everyone's sharing the bloody milk in the workplace, then, then we get conflict. But when you've got absolute clarity, well, this is the number one thing. Is it impacting the, the core purpose of this organization? Then you can dissolve office politics because we're all moving towards this thing. Next, you look at the elite level athlete and they have clear incentives all the way through the year. There's opportunities to win medals, to set qualifying times, to receive track suits, to be in photo shoots, to get sponsors. Anytime they're doing something well, they get rewarded. Inside your workplace, very often the incentive program and the reward programs are not specifically and directly linked to the outcome. And if the outcome's not clear, it gets very gray because they go, oh, this year we're going to do an award for the best salesperson or the person who, oh, it's funny, so-and-so parks the car in the wrong place, let's give an award for that. Then it needs to be thought through so that there are clear incentives to any quality or value or productivity level directly relevant to that final outcome. Then you start to get morale because people start going, well, I'm making progress. And as soon as progress happens, morale goes up. See, Morale isn't a black and white good or bad thing. Morale is, is, is a gradient. It's directly relevant to how much progress we feel like we are making towards an outcome and at what speed we're making that progress. That's when morale picks up. And then, you, then absenteeism and workplace politics and all those things, they just disappear because work's obviously more rewarding.